What is up guys, Tommy from SoFlo Jeeping here. So for those of you who don't know, I've been living in Daytona Beach now for about two years. And after living here for two years, uh, doing many, many beach trips, uh, learned a couple things. And figure I could share that with you guys with Jeep Beach approaching and summer approaching. A lot of stuff that people come from out of town may not know. So here's 10 things you should know before driving your Jeep or car on Daytona Beach. The first thing you should know before driving on Daytona Beach is that it's not free. So you do have to pay to drive on the beach and it's kind of expensive. So if you just wanna pay for the day, it's $20 per day to drive on the beach. So say you spend two days, that's 40 bucks. If you're a non-resident of Volusia County and you don't go to any local schools, it's $100 for an annual pass. But say if you're gonna be here for all five days of Jeep Beach, it might be worth it. If you're a student at a local college or you're a resident of Volusia County, it's only 25 bucks for the year. So if you live around here, that's definitely the way to go. Next thing you need to know is turn on your lights when you're driving. There's a lot of salt spray in the air and you really can't see that far. If you turn on your lights, people can see you coming. Lifeguards can see you coming. Kids can see you coming. So when you're driving on the beach, turn those lights on. Next thing that you should do when driving on the beach is lower your windows you there's a lot of kids running around there's a lot of beach balls running around you want to hear if someone's yelling at you to stop lower your windows so you can actually hear what's going on outside so you don't get yourself in trouble or injured or someone else in trouble or injured next thing that i did not know before coming here is that the lifeguards on daytona beach they are law enforcement those guys are real police officers they can write you a ticket they can arrest you so if you're gonna go to Daytona Beach, keep that in mind. Lifeguards driving around, the red F-150s and the red Jeeps, they are real law enforcement. For stuff like not having your headlights on, for stuff like windows up, for stuff like speeding, they can ticket you and usually they will. So keep that in mind if you're gonna drive on Daytona Beach. The next thing I cannot stress enough, I see it every year at Jeep Beach and it makes me cr absolutely cringe. That's don't drive in the water. This is salt water, this is the ocean. Those of you who don't know, salt is bad. Salt is corrosive. That's why all vehicles up north are all rusted to crap because they put the salt on the roads. If you drive your Jeep in the water, it's gonna have the same effect. It's gonna get salty. It's gonna ruin everything and you're not gonna be a happy camper. So don't drive in the salt water. Next thing is when you're on the, on the beach, drive like a normal human being. Don't tear it up. Don't do donuts. We all know your 265 horsepower Jeep JK has been the tires in the sand. You don't need to prove it to us. All it does is one, get the lifeguards mad at you, get you a ticket. Two, make a lot of people here in Daytona Beach that want to take away the beach driving have more of a reason to do so. And three, it tears up the beach for the vehicles behind you. We're all in four wheel drive Jeeps. If the sand gets tore up, we'll be fine. But during Daytona truck meet, that was a great example. Everyone was doing donuts and tearing up the sand. I've never seen that worse. I pulled out seven cars that day just because they were not able to just drive on what is normally a super hard packed beach section of beach because everyone was tearing it up. So don't be that guy, drive like a normal person and don't purposely go out of your way to tear up the beach. So this next one goes in hand with the don't drive in salt water, but it's wash your Jeep after going on the beach. Even if you don't lay a tire in the water, heck, even if you don't even drive on the actual sand and you're just driving up A1A, after your trip to Daytona, give your Jeep a good wash. Even if you don't go in the water, the salt spray picks up and there is a ton of salt in the air around the beach. So before moving here, I never had to retouch any paint, nothing on my Jeep. Here every three months, I'm doing touch-ups on the underside of my Jeep because it is that bad. The salt is no joke. Take care of your Jeeps. Wash it after your trip to Daytona Beach. Next thing that I did not know and had told very quickly to me by one of the lifeguards slash law enforcement is you're only supposed to park on the land side of the beach. So for those of you who don't know, there is, there's a lane that you drive on. Don't park on the ocean side of that. That is for people, that is for kids running around. Don't drive there, don't park there. Um, if you pull off for two seconds, take a quick picture, I'm sure no one will mind, but if you're gonna park, park on the land side. You'll see like a sandy hill, park just at the base of that or else a lifeguard will show up and they will tell you to move. So save yourself the hassle from the get-go, park on the land side of the lane when you're parking on the beach. Next thing, especially if you're in a more normal car. So the later in the day you go, the softer the sand's gonna get. So if you're in a normal car, try to go in the earlier part of the day, because once you start getting to three, four, five, six, seven o'clock, the sand gets really soft and a lot of people get stuck. 
in the morning I've gone at so they usually open the beach around noon time so around there I'm not even joking I've seen Hellcats driving on the beach with no problem at all because everything is still super hard packed from when the tide came down so if you don't want to drive in soft sand go earlier later in the day there will be softer sand and there inevitably will be people getting stuck so the next thing is to get off the beach by seven that is not just like a rule of thumb that is like an actual law get off the beach by seven so pretty much the reason why we can drive on daytona beach is because the tide pretty much covers up the whole beach packs the sand down and then comes back down so when it comes back down around noon time where there's enough room to drive they'll open it you can drive on what was underwater and is super hard packed but then around seven is when that tide's going to come back up so if you don't like if you find yourself having some sort of a mechanical issue or you're stuck or something and you don't get off that hard packed section of, of sand by seven o'clock the waves will just drown your jeep i'm not even exaggerating there the water will just come up to you and then you're not gonna have a good night so yeah get off the beach by seven i usually start making my way out by six just so i can drive around a little bit before i take the beach ramp but yeah get off the beach by seven and if you follow those 10 things you'll have a great time it's a ton of fun to drive on the beach little extra note if you want if you're a four-wheel drive and want something a little bit quieter go up to ormond beach the sand is a lot softer but it's a lot quieter because of that and there's actually like a sign that says four-wheel drive access only but overall it's a lot of fun to drive on the beach i think we're one of the we're what i think volusia county and then just north of us so pretty much northeastern florida is the only place left in florida where you can drive on the beach so don't ruin it for the rest of us have fun enjoy it and yeah that's 10 things you should know before driving on daytona beach hope you guys enjoyed the video if you want to like the video like the video if you want to comment on the video comment on the video if you want to subscribe subscribe hopefully i'll see you guys at jeep beach